everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jan and Christian's with me. And tonight we're going to be discussing Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho. So if you want to hear our thoughts, stick around. Downtown, everyone's waiting for you. So this was a movie you were very much a I'm a massive fan. Edgar Wright fan. I don't think I've ever talked about this on the channel. I love Edgar Wright's movies. Uh, Fa Hot Fuzz, one of my, in my top ten favorite comedies. I really love Baby Driver. And I really enjoy Scott Pilgrim, World's End. Even Shaun of the Dead, which I really like. I think it's a little overrated nowadays, but I do still enjoy the film. I, he hadn't made a movie I haven't enjoyed. And that holds true of this one, honestly. Okay. Um, uh, where would you put it for the films you've seen this year? Uh, I don't think it beat Candyman. No, no, it did not beat Candyman, or not, but I am going to uh, withhold the information of where this would go for my end of the year list. So tune back there, but uh, this has definitely etched a place in my end of the year list. I kind of figured it um, would. What about for you? Uh, you, you are no, you've never seen an Edgar Wright movie in full. Uh, no, no um, I've seen chunks of them. I'm, he's not he's not a and I d don't say don't think that this is like a thing this is he's not much of a director for Jim mm -hmm, that's he's just, fine. His it, it, um, but what I will say for last night in Soho is it is a very beautifully shot movie it's very stylistic I mean there, there are some shots I don't know how the hell he did it but it was very pretty to look at it, it was is, a gorgeous it's a gorgeous movie this movie has fucking style and sleekness for days yes yeah. it does um it has a lot of style and sleekness. It doesn't for me, and again... I was and, waiting for this. Um, it doesn't have much substance. I was. Fi I figured they were going to... It, gonna, it I, didn't I, have I, a I lot. And, and I would classify this, and this isn't a bad, bad or good thing, but I think this would definitely be more of a supernatural thriller, more it, than anything, than a horror, outright horror. Wouldn't you agree? I would actually say this is a full-on horror movie. Okay, it takes, why? Um, that would kind of be a spoiler. No, no can you the, generalize the, it? The old... The whole thing of what the movie is talking about and the whole thing the movie's going for, plus especially like the first a the first hour of this movie straight up, yeah, it's really not a horror movie. There's some slight paranormal elements to the film, but for the most part, it's not. But when we get especially to our last third, it, in my opinion, it does go go, go into full straight on horror territory for me. I I get that. I I, I get that. For me, it, it really isn't. It's more of a to me. I would classify this as a supernatural paranormal thriller. Um, it, it it's. It's not a bad movie, guys. Uh, hear me out when I say this. It, it's very pretty to look at, but this is a movie that isn't going to stay with Jen. This is a movie that I'm like, oh, yeah, I saw it a few weeks. And, it, and I wasn't bored. Like, I'll give the movie this. I wasn't bored, but when we finally got to the payoff, I was like, really? I love our ending. I, I think I, it, I think love it, the it, ending of this movie. I kind of saw it coming. Oh, I did, too. I think, like, the reveal at the end of the movie, I was like, okay, well, I figured that out pretty early on. But oh. the actual and the the ending does. And the these... ending was a little not to spoil anything. The ending was a little too happy for me. Maybe I'm a Debbie Downer. I prefer I prefer a little darker endings. This was a little too. I'll neatly. talk to you about that off screen because that would be a massive spoiler. But I have a thing about that. Okay, um, it, it it ends it it's wrapped up a little too neat for me. Um, I would uh, disagree, but that was just my personal take uh, from the film. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I I, I kind of expected this honestly. Oh well, no, and don't get me wrong, guys. Oh, no, this I isn't know. a bad film for me but it's not one it's very pretty to look at there are some good shots the acting is really good the story isn't bad but the story for Jen and I might be stupid I probably am missing a lot of stuff that people can see in deeper but for me there just wasn't a lot of stuff oh there was a lot I was there wasn't a lot there was and there was kind of plots like her mother there wasn't there they, they made a big deal out of her mother and then they kind of dropped it and I, was I like, oh I love that I actually like I actually really like all of what that all of what it does and the overall what this movie at least in my opinion is saying i fucking vibe with super hardcore what's it saying without spoiling it this whole okay this whole movie for those of you who don't know the premise of this film we follow a, a young girl getting into her 20s um she is becoming a fashion de uh, fashion designer. She's going to London. She comes from a small uh, small town, and she is obsessed with the nineteen sixties. The yes. music, the uh, the fashion, the everything about the nineteen uh, sixties. It was a better 60s. time. In she her has life. it with rose tinted glasses, and oh, it was so much better back then. And if only life was like it like it like it was now in the sixties, everything would be so much better. She's one of those people. She's blinded by nostalgia, yeah. and the whole thing of this movie is her slowly real is her finding out. Oh, 
there the sixties were just like now. There was uh, there was a lot of fucking dark in mm-hmm. that in the in the sixties, and I really, without going into it, what the, at least in my opinion, again, up to interpretation. But for me, what this movie is really talking about is how this movie is weirdly nostalgic while also fucking bo- while also hating nostalgia. Yeah, like, th- I get. I would yeah, agree with like you this on movie that. is super. Like all of Edgar Wright's movies to a point are all very nostalgic about old Hollywood, but this movie is also very much like saying, hey, nostalgia a fucking really toxic thing to do and if you just are constantly obsessing over the past what the fuck are you making in the future yeah um, and then that's a good point to make yeah, and i would I agree really, christian that yeah, that I does really, bring it up in the film really d- uh, dug all of that and especially like even with even talking about like from a filmmaking a- aspect too i really liked uh, how it handled all that because it's she's uh, she's obsessed with like music culture everything about the 60s with rose tinted glasses and i really like how the movie without like making it super fucking obvious like hey here's the message of the movie you know it's not even you it's not even of a message, just an argument the movie's making. Um, I really like how it handles all of that. Yeah, and we also touch upon that she might, she comes from some, some, some mental, it doesn't exactly say what she's suffering from, but her mother had some issues, and she, her grandmother is who raised her, is sort of worried that she might as well. In fact, there is a scene where she goes to the police, and the, one of the cops does think she's pretty much Looney Tunes. Mm-hmm, yeah. She does, uh, it, that's more of a plot point than anything. It's just kind of, I felt like that was just a device to get the movie going in the final act. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. And she ba- and at first, it's great. She basically, she doesn't fit in in fashion school, which makes her decide to get a room. She's supposed to be sharing a room, and uh, her roommate's kind of a bitch from hell, a mean girl, if a British mean girl. Basically. Yeah, a British mean girl, yeah. And, and, she, and she decides she's going to rent her own uh, room when she finds one, and she does. And this room is kind of a portal to the past. Every time she goes to sleep, she wakes up in the 60s. She's experiencing the life. Life of this wo- of this woman from the '60s, played by Anya, Ch- Anya Taylor Joy, who gives a cr- everyone well, in this everyone in this fucking cast gives top notch performances. It really does. And at first, uh, the first night, she it's very glamorized, and she loves it, and the clothes, and the music, and just just everything about it is wonderful. And the woman that she is following is an aspiring singer, and it looks like fate is going to is going to smile on this woman, and it kind of changes hers when she wakes up and is back in present day she kind of changes her personality a little bit she kind of wants to be this, this woman. woman she changes her hair color and um she kind of changes her attitude somewhat as well but it doesn't take very long the next night when she goes back into the past to see that it's not so great and two things are approaching and and, and and this woman who, who who thought she was going to be this big singer turns out that she's probably not i don't want to go any further because i feel that's mm-hmm. a spoiler yeah oh definitely she, yeah she she doesn't get the life she wants and uh, and and so and she's trying to help this girl and save this girl and it just goes into that one of my issues with this movie and again I what this isn't a major sin because I was never bored like I am with some of these movies but there was a couple times when I thought okay I get it can we please get on to something I felt we followed them a little too much a little too long I was like yeah let's get to the meat I was of really the story. I was really engrossed in the movie overall so that I never had that moment but I can I, honestly see where I can see that I, I it was a little little too long like I wasn't bored don't get me wrong because this isn't one where I was like oh my god it wasn't like that but I, I it was a nice world to be in but I was like okay I felt like they're just it was more pretty than more substance for me it was it see, was pretty uh, see, to look see, at see, to me there was a lot the, the movie is fucking gorgeous the movie is there is legit one of my favorite sequences in the, in, of the entire year is in this movie of uh, dancing in the 60s. I, that, se- that sequence, well, those of you who've seen the movie know exactly what I'm talking about. That sequence fucking amazed me. I, it is. It's that a is great a, sequence. That is a marvel of filmmaking, especially since it was done in one take without any edits or any cuts. N- fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, but I thought there was actually a lot of substance to, uh, to the movie, too. I was devouring everything that this movie was going for. Did you have any criticisms, little, small, big, anything? Um, I can I can, I can totally acknowledge. No movie's poor perfect of course yeah uh, i can see where you're coming from of the movie is a little long in the tube depending on and depending on the type of person don't get me are. wrong because i know i say that a lot sometimes i was never bored with this movie i just there was a couple times that i thought okay can we please g- i get it i i got the the subject of matter of it's dangerous to look at anything with rose colored glasses mm-hmm. i i managed to pick up that subtext and stuff but i was like i like okay can we please just get this and let's wrap this up and let's see i was waiting i guess for me what was going to make or break the film 
album would be ending for me, and the ending did not. I, it was fine, I love, but I saw it coming. I love the ending. I, I, I fucking, got that. I, I saw the reveal coming, too, but I also fucking love... There's a lot more than just the reveal. Oh, yeah, there's no, a there's, lot more than just the... Re- oh, yeah, don't get me wrong, guys. This is not a bad movie. It, ju- it, it It's like a pretty cake, and, th- and this is probably a very stupid analogy. It's a very pretty cake, but it's empty calories for me. That's basic. The film, I, I can, can acknowledge. That. The acting is top-notch. The directing is tight. The the writing, like I said, the story wasn't much the, subs for me, for okay. me personally, wasn't much subs. I saw everything we were going for. I think this is a movie. If you start poking holes at it, there's going to show threads because there was a couple things I'm like, how the hell did this all get started? I know she has some mental issues, but like it, it, it didn't give enough. We'll get into that in spoilers. Uh, I had okay, some questions. Okay. See, see, that's the thing. That's the thing, though, because you're not. Uh, that didn't surprise me, because you're not used to Edgar Wright movies. Edgar Wright has gone on record plenty of times. He fucking hates expo- uh, bl- uh, pointless and blatant exposition movies. He hates that in movies. He hates ex- explanations for shit that does that doesn't need it. I, I guess, but I did. Which was, I'm kind of in the same camp, so. I, I guess maybe I'm dumb and need to be spoon fed stuff. But there were some things I'm like, how, why, why this particular girl can you know? I I just I, there were. Things about this that you kind of and I and I've heard a few other people say this too that if you start pulling at the threads of this it kind of comes the story kind of is very loose. Okay, see, I agree with you that that's a case, but I also don't think like I'm not being this to, saying this to be a dick to you. I don't think that's a good argument against a movie because you can do that with literally every fucking movie in existence. Th- Citizen Kane is widely considered to be the greatest movie of all time. You can poke so many fucking holes in that movie. That's true. That's true. I I, I and you're right. You know what? That that's a fair argument. And you're right, and there's a couple of, God knows, one of my favorite movies, you just look at it and everything, Whopper Jaws. Uh, I guess I just did, the, but the, for me, the ride. The movie didn't vibe with you. Yeah. The, the movie didn't the, vibe with you like it did with me. And it wasn't a bad, and see, this is the weird thing about this. This movie's just kind of, eh, I don't hate it. I wasn't mad watching it. I'm not sorry I watched it, but it's not It's not going to make me a big Edgar Wright fan. I, I, I appreciate his talent. Mm-hmm. I appreciate his talent and his stylistic choices, and the acting was great, and I'm not pissed off I saw this but I just kind of left feeling okay. Eh. Okay. Kind of that, that's just kind of empty empty it's a pretty package but when you open it up there's not much there for me personally okay I can totally respect that yeah so that so I guess maybe it's not so much the story wise it's just it the, the whole trip wasn't particularly it didn't bother oh wait hang on a second we're in an internet review no you're fucking wrong <laughs> you're a fake movie fan you know nothing about horror Fuck you! How dare you have a different opinion than mine? I, I, you know what? You're right. Well, and they all knew I was. Yeah, a fake you're a movie. fucking fake horror fan because you don't agree with me. I, I totally am. They, the long-time viewers already knew true, this. True, true. But with all that said, there's enough to see it, and I think this is worth a watch. Mm. I give this a B minus. Okay. I'd give this a B minus. What about you? Strong positive. Highly recommend checking this movie out. It is a really, really damn good time. Especially if you're an Edgar Wright fan. Like, if you're an Edgar Wright fan, you've probably already seen this. But th- th- for me, personally, like, I'll, okay, I'll talk more about this when we get to end of the year list. This is right up there with Hot Fuzz and uh, Baby Driver for me is one, of, is one of Edgar Wright's finest movies. I think this is really fucking strong. So, uh, <laughs> that that is our rating. I, I give it, I would say check it out if it looks interesting interesting to you but don't necessarily be in a hurry but i don't think you're going to be mad you're saw it you just just go in with low expectations and you might really end up liking it what the fuck does jen know anyway and uh, you would positive say, high positive i really like this movie it's not my favorite film of the year but i really liked it it's not a bad movie definitely this is one check it out for yourselves i would just caution go in with very low expectations and you might be pleasantly surprised and if you don't and if they don't make those expectations well you didn't have that much to begin with with. Like, I guess that's with any movie, mm-hmm, but yeah. I, I, I was neither blown away. It's just for me, this is an eh movie that I'm probably never going to bother with again. It was all right to see once. It was all right to see once. It was just kind of eh. I liked it. I get that. I get that. Well, that, 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 that's one the wonderful thing about film, how it can make it. You can make one person's jaw drop on the floor and the other one go eh. <laughs> so that, with all that out of the... Do you have anything else no, you want to bring really. up? Okay, cool. With everything out of the way, booze and ghouls, we hope you've enjoyed uh, this episode of Jen's Reviews from the Grave. And as always, if you did and you happen to be new around here, please hit that subscriber button because we do appreciate every subscriber we get. And with that, we wish you a good day, a good evening, and we'll be back pretty soon. Bye, guys. Cheers. <laughs>